Burr, are we ready? We're out. Okay, over to you, Julian. Okay, um, hello everyone. I'm Julien Cretel at Populo, but I'm Jubabs everywhere else. Um, so 12 years ago, uh, this guy, Linus Torvalds, uh, flipped the bird at both BitKeeper and Subversion and rolled out his own uh, version control system. And I'm guessing most people who were, were there uh, back in the day probably uh, think that was a good thing, right? We're much happier as a result. So to celebrate that 12th anniversary, here are my uh, seven tips and tricks to work effectively with Git. So if you're coming to Git, if you're new to Git, you're probably rightfully confused by some of the terminology. So here are some useful an analogies. Um, so a commit, you can think of a commit as a picture, a snapshot of the state of the code at a certain moment in time. And if you follow on with the same kind of metaphor, staging, staging is about preparing the commit, the next commit. So you can think of it as composing the shot, the next shot, okay? You're, you're getting everybody in the picture. Uh, no bunny ears allowed, uh, you know, that kind of stuff. And then you take the picture when you're, when you're ready. Um, branch is arguably a very misleading term in um, Git uh, parlance. So don't think of it as a line of development. The, the, the best thing you can do if you're learning Git is think of it as a pointer to an, an existing commit. So if this book represents a... If, this, if you think of your repository as a book that chronicles your progress, um, you can think of a branch as one of those bookmarks, okay? It's a point of interest in the book, and typically over the time the project's gonna change uh, its position. Uh, a tag, if, you, if we continue with the, the book analogy, a tag is more like a uh, chapter heading, okay? Uh, it's a point of historical interest in uh, your book. And then the head is, um, if you look at the graph that c your commits form, the head is like a you are here sign. Second, if you're coming to Git, uh, you don't know anything about Git, try to stay away from GUIs, whether they be standalone in you know, like things like source tree of Git, crack Git Kraken, or whether they be in, uh, integrated to your IDE, uh, IntelliJ, whatever. Um, they're shiny things. They give you an illusion of mastery, but as soon as you, uh, you, you get in trouble and you probably head over to Stack Overflow to ask, how did I get my repository in this state? Uh, unless you're able to find a log of the commands that your IDE or whatever you're using ran in the background, you, you'll be like, oh, I, I clicked this, I think then I clicked that, but I, I'm not sure. Whereas if you're, um, if you're working your, in the, uh, with the command line interface, you can take, the, take a dump of the tail of your shell history and say, this is exactly what I did, and then somebody with maybe more uh, Git knowledge than you have uh, can explain what happened and how to uh, get you out of trouble. So GUIs are an attr attractive nuisance, just uh, refrain from using it at least at the beginning. Uh, three, so listen to the diffs, okay. Um, so, here I've got a Java class. I apologize for people who don't use Java. Uh, I have a J Java class. Hopefully, at least some of the people in the front row can, can see this. Um, a Java class called RebelCon Talk. And this diff is showing some changes that I made to this class. And I, it probably takes you, you know, five seconds tops to realize that I added a uh, field called speaker bio and um, a getter for this. But this diff is actually telling you that you could organize your code um, in a way that makes it easy, uh, easier for your reviewers to review your code, your, your collaborators to review your code. So what's my, my beef with this? This line, this diff, this red line, and this green line don't really tell you what happened. You have to parse the whole thing to realize what happened. So those diffs, are kind of nudging you, are, are kind of telling you that you could do things in a smarter way. And I, I don't care, don't tell me, I've got an IMAX screen, I can make my, uh, my lines as long as I want. Um, this is just not how we uh, human beings read, okay? Um, so let's see how we can improve the situation a bit and make the, what, what actually changed more obvious. So here, if I change, I've, I've done exactly the same thing, but I, I've changed the way the code is formatted, and it becomes immediately 
um, obvious what I did, okay? Oh yeah, I added a field there. I needed uh, a parameter in the constructor. I needed to uh, uh, assign it in the constructor and the, the getter is the same. But see, just by changing the way you format your code, you can make it easier for your collaborators to see what actually changed and then you're, you're saving precious time for them. Of course, this is a very simplistic example, but it's multiply that by the number of classes in your system and you know, each diff that people review is going to take its toll. So you want, it to, you want to make it easy for your collaborators. Um, I've got another example there, but I'm just going to skip it because I'm afraid of running out of time. Um, so this is kind of in the same spirit as the previous one. Um, you know, we probably, all of us, use some kind of agile methodology. And methodologies such as Lean and Kanban uh, tell us, you know, work in small batches. So why don't we apply the same principle to commits? Uh, so instead of monolithic commits that like touch files, very different files for very different reasons, um, you can be disciplined about it and um, have small focused log logical commits. So here's an example. Uh, you read it from the uh, from the bottom up, um, and it's showing you um, it's showing you a history of the changes, but each commit is doing something very small, very logical, very atomic. And when you have those small commits, it's very easy to write a descriptive commit message. Um, yeah, I guess it, there is a parallel with the single responsibility, single responsibility principle in uh, O. Um, and why would you write a descriptive message? Because then you can grip them. Uh, you can grab the messages and find the commit you're interested in. We'll see that in a minute. So small lo logical commits. And as well, it's easy to reverse the decision uh, later. So, and you can think of it as, imagine you're this guy, you're, you're uh, or this gal, I don't know, um, and you're climbing up this very icy, very vertical uh, cliff. Um, if you fall down, you don't want to fall all the way down, right? You're, you're gonna, you know, drive those, uh, those thingies in, in the ice so that if you mess up, if you get in a, a state where the, you've broken everything, you know that you're only going to fall so far, okay? So that's another reason. Uh, if you're, you, you, you never run the risk of being stranded by your changes, you can always start back at the, the previous save, so to, so to speak. Um, okay, so the distributed nature of Git has freed us in so many ways, right? So Git allows you to make changes save them locally before you ever uh, push them uh, for review or to for somebody to look at, okay, for, to, to some central server. Um, so this gives you an opportunity to clean up this thing and again, make it easier for your collaborators to review your changes. So let's say you write a commit message and you realize you made a typo in the commit message. Do you leave that in? Well, you could, but then you're gonna make it harder for people to grab the history later. So you might as well, reach for commit git, uh, sorry, git commit dash dash amend and fix that. Or maybe you forgot a file in the, the last commit, don't create a new one, just amend the previous commit. And, uh, and if you realize that you've got problems in all the commits, you can reach for the, uh, the nuclear option, uh, git rebase, uh, interactive rebase. Um, I use it all the time, it's my fave uh, of all times. Uh, you, can, you can like, you can pretend, it, it's pretty much the command that, um, allows you to pretend uh, that you got everything right the first time. People go, wow, well, this guy really knows what he's doing. <laughs> so yeah, it's a good one to have. Um, the reflux, so Git has a lot of mechanisms to avoid, uh, to prevent you from shooting yourself in the foot. Uh, but sadly, uh, branches, do not, branches themselves do not remember at which uh, commit they used to point out in the past. Um, so sometimes you can get a, in a situation where your branch is actually not at all where it's supposed to be. But there's this mechanism called the ref log that actually remembers for you uh, where a given branch uh, pointed or where a reference or a reference is a branch or a tag. So here um, I can see, running this command, I can see uh, where I was on the commit uh, graph. And using that, I can, you know, get out of trouble pretty much. So reach for the, the ref log if you're in trouble. Okay, and then finally, 
Um, Git is great in that it allows you to explore your, um, your repository. You can find out about the history of the code base. So let's say you want to list all the commits that contain the message, uh, that whose message uh, contained bug fix. You can do that with uh, git log grep. You want to list all the commits that Kevin wrote, probably not so many. Um, <laughs> so you can do that. Uh, git blame, so it sounds very confrontational, but it, it isn't, right? It's just, if, if you're asking yourself the question, who last touched this uh, particular line, run git blame on the file, and you're gonna have, on the left-hand side, you'll see, oh yeah, it was uh, last touched by Pierre or whatever. Okay, just one, one go, T 10 seconds. And then git short log uh, dash sn shows you a, a list of contributors in the order of um, the number of commits that they contributed the uh, thing. And then finally, my last slide, um, there is a, this tool co called Gorse, and it's, you run it on your repository and it shows you an animated um, version of who contributed to what. It's really cool, it looks like some kind of video game, but it's, it's really uh, interesting to see what happened to your uh, history. So that's me for today.